Hey guys, Aiden here from Core Electronics, and I'm back again with the Lulzbot Mini to take a deeper look at the 3D printing software of choice for your 3D printer, Cura. We'll be looking at some of the options available in the Quick Print view, and we'll also delve into some of the options you can find under the hood in Cura. To finish up, I'll show you guys how to set up your printer with 1.75mm filament, which is also entirely possible using the single extruder tool head. So just jumping into Cura here guys, the first thing that we, we need to do is load up a model. So we can do that in one of three ways. We can use this load model button in the top left of your workspace, or we can go into the file menu and select load model, or we could just double click on the STL from our desktop or wherever it's saved. So I'll just double click on that and load it up. All right. Now a few things happen when you load your model into Cura. You'll notice that you get the render of the model of the bed and the printer control button becomes active. For us, that's the save G-code button today. If you left click on the model, you'll gain access to some of the options that relate to the model's size and position on the bed. We can see these here. We have rotate, scale, and mirror. Now this model is just an Apple Watch holder that I happened to grab off Thingiverse. The link's in the description below if you want one. Now it orients like this on the print bed when we load it up. And if we switch over to the overhang view mode, which is in the top right of your workspace, which is this one, we can see with a few a little bit of rotation, we can see all these red zones. Now, these red zones are overhangs and they require supports to print correctly. So what we can do is we can change the orientation of our print to make it a bit easier for our printer to print it. You might find yourself with a model that loads up sideways or upside down, just like this one. And to successfully print this sort of thing, we're gonna need brims, rafts and supports, which aren't always necessary. So we're going to do a few quick adjustments just to reduce the amount of supports we're going to need. Now for us today, rotation is going to play a big part in getting our print to print successfully. So in Cura, you can just hold right click and move your mouse around to rotate the view. You can also rotate the print model. So if we click on the rotate button, we get a couple of options. We've got lay flat here, which will essentially just drop it and touch it to the bed. So it doesn't do a whole lot for us right now, but what we can do is select the axes that we want to rotate it on. So for us today, we're going to use that yellow axis here. And we're just going to drag it around by about 90 degrees. And then it'll just drop down to the bed like that. Now you can see overhangs, there aren't a lot. So those red parts that are just touching the bed, they're not too bad. And if we needed, we can print some supports just to help out print these, these little overhangs here. So that's a good way to do it. You can also click that lay flat button if you do get it onto the onto the print bed and you just want to make sure that it's flush against it. I'll just go over scaling and mirroring. So scaling, you've got obviously this option here which is just maximizes the dimensions of your model so you can print as big as you want, which is that, or you can just reset it. And you also have a uniform scale. So you can scale, say if we scale by 1.2 in the X axis, it uniformly scales it. Or you can go ahead and turn that off with this lock button down the bottom. For mirroring, we can mirror in the X, Y or Z axes, which can come in handy. Moving over to the left hand menu here, we can see the quick print menu system. Now this is the one that's enabled by default in Cura. You have levels of material. So in here we've got first run, beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert, and all. It's always good to just use all. Once you start to know your filaments, you know that it'll be there. And obviously in the material box, you've just got a big list of material. We've got three profiles for most of our filaments here. So Usually we're printing with ABS, so I'll select that and I'll just show you the three different quick print profiles. So a standard profile, a high speed profile, and a high detail profile. Now these profiles usually just define the layer heights and the speed at which the print prints. Bear in mind that with 3D printing, you've usually got to balance time and quality. So this is a perfect example of that. If you want a fast print, it's not gonna look as good as a high detail print. So that's something to bear in mind when you're selecting your profile. Maybe with like a rapid prototyping solution, you'd go with a high speed solution. But if you were printing, say, a, a high quality model that you wanted to have on display or something, you'd probably opt for the uh, high detail one. Now below that, we have two more options. We have print support structures, which we were talking about before, and print brim. So what I'm gonna do is just talk you through those two. Print support structures, like we said before, it'll enable us to print extra plastic that will be removable at the end of the print that will support these parts that might be a bit tricky for a print, uh, FDM printer to print. Now support structures help to support those overhangs and like I said you can just remove them either with like an X-Acto blade or you can sometimes just pull them out when the print's done. Brims, 
Now brim is an extra skirt, so remember the skirt went down in our last video, and it went down around the outside, just to purge some of the inaccuracies out of the filament. Well, a, a brim is essentially extra skirts that print and connect up to the base of your model. And by doing that, you increase the surface area that's touching the bed plate. Sometimes when you're printing things, they might have a really tiny surface area touching the plate. This model doesn't, but you'll see in the future that there will be some like that. And what can happen is you can get those, those parts just falling off the print bed. Like the PEI is great, but when there's no surface area to hold onto, it can be really tricky. So brims can help you out there. And at the end of the print, you can essentially just pull them straight off. Now the quick print profiles that we're just looking at are great for the most part. But if you learn some, more, some of the more complicated concepts in 3D printing, you're gonna start wanting to change some of the other settings. To get to those settings in Cura, what we do is just head over to the expert menu here. We click that one and drop down to switch full settings. Now we get this little thing here, profile copy. So I'm on the standard profile. It's gonna copy all those settings across from a standard profile into my full settings, which is a good template to work from. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we've got four tabs up the top here. We've got basic settings, advanced settings, plugins, and start and end G-code. So you can actually read the G-code as it would go through it. We're gonna just focus on some of these basic settings today, including infill percent and filament size and flow rate. We'll get into a few of the other settings in a later video, but for right now, these are the ones that you're probably gonna to wanna to change and experiment with just to see how it affects your print. First off, we're gonna look at this, this option here. We've got fill density. And now, with Cura, it's really good. If you mouse over any of these boxes, it'll give you a great description of what this tooltip does. So, let's just go over fill density. This controls how densely filled the insides of your print will be. So for a solid part, use 100%, or an empty part, use 0%. A value around 20% is usually enough. So by default, we've got 20% there. I've got a model that I printed here. And what we did here, we printed this side of it with about a 20% infill, and it's super rigid and sturdy. On the other side, which was the bottom half of this jaw, we, are, we actually printed this at 5%, and you can really feel it. It's a bit... It's almost a bit bendy. It's printed with ABS, but it's a bit bendy and it still feels quite sturdy, but it's, it came up really nicely too. So we slowed the flow rate down on that one, but we'll get into that in a second. So yeah, our tips for this is, if you're gonna be printing something that's gonna get used a lot in rugged environments, higher percentages are obviously better. The less air, the better. Um, it's gonna last longer and, and such, but Sometimes you're printing something big like this T-Rex head, and if you are printing something this big, it's gonna use a lot of filament, and dropping that infill percentage can actually save you a bit of filament, so it's worth taking a look at. Even just experimenting around with some test prints and seeing what the, the effect of that on your print is would be worthwhile. And you've got a couple of other settings here which are pretty self-explanatory. You've got the print speed. This is the general speed that the print happens. You've got your top print, print temperature and your bed temperature. Now moving down to the filament section, we've got a diameter here, which we can set, and a flow percentage. So this is a, essentially a ratio that you add when you are extruding filament. I'm just going to run you guys through this one here. So this is the setting, if you were to want to change your filament type over to a 1.75 millimeter filament, this is all you have to do. So you just go in here, and you just type in 1.75 millimeters, it'll do a recalculation of the G-code, it's really as easy as that. You can just load up your 1.75 millimeter filament and it'll work. All right, so that's our guide into the Cura environment today. Hopefully it would have given you a bit of a deeper understanding of the model orientation from this video. If you were a bit curious about some of the advanced settings that you can see in these menus that I didn't cover, and you wanted some more information on those, feel free to message us or leave us a comment and I'll get around to it. If you wanna learn more about 3D printing or even just check out some filaments and printers, head over to corelectronics.com.au and take a look around. Thanks for watching and have a great day.